Okay, so I want to show you guys how I perform uh, two-sided milling. I have here a uh, fantastic design I found on GrabCAD, so it's not my own, I'll credit to the original creator. Just a spoon, uh, something easy, something two-sided to show off to you. Um, you can see a lot of lines, so th these are basically to contain the uh, end mill within the regions I specify. I added some tabs here and here, um, and then what you see around this pattern of lines, this geometry, that's the uh, flip geometry, and that's what I want to show to you guys. It's not uh, something I came up with, uh, I saw it in a video from a guy um, on YouTube, from a guy, I don't know, I think he's Scandinavian. Um, the link to his channel is gonna be in the description box of my video and uh, you should uh, definitely check his channel out because he's uh, making some cool stuff so uh, it's not gonna be like an in-depth tutorial about how to set up uh, rhino and uh, how to set up the toolpaths and stuff it's just gonna be like a uh, fast overview of how i did things and then of course show you how the flip geometry works. The uh, first thing to keep in mind is uh, to make sure your uh, object is dead center to the uh, world zero. So uh, you can see here this point is my uh, my zero and if you look it's the center of the y direction, the center of the x and the center you can see here of the z. So um, this is the world zero. I also made two work zeros. So I have two setups, one for the top and one for the bottom. And if I click on here, you can see it's made a new zero at the top of my stock. And if I click this one at the bottom of my stock, of course, it's gonna be the top when I flip it around. And you can also see that uh, the uh, X marker here is uh, in the different direction so I had to uh, set that up so that I can flip it and then everything lines up again um, I will flip along the Y axis uh, just to show you guys it doesn't have anything to do with the object being symmetrical this spoon happens to be symmetrical along the horizontal line, so the x-axis. Um, that's why I chose to do the flipping along the y-axis. So the tip of the spoon comes to the right side and the handle of the spoon flips over to the uh, left side. So let me show you how I set up my different operations. So setup one is the top side. I uh, first do a roughing pass. I already uh, cut all the way through to the uh, other side of the stock and also the roughing of the top side of the spoon. Then a finishing pass, you can see here. And this third profiling operation is in fact the flip geometry. So if I go back into the uh, program view, I'm not going to delete it now because I have everything uh, already rendered out. But this line is uh, the one that you are going to generate with my uh, script that I wrote. And then I just did an offset of 8 millimeters because I am going to make a slot 8 millimeters wide. So this is the area that's going to be cut out and if I go into the operation then you can see yeah so uh, you can see that it's cut out the shape as I want it to so that's it for the uh, first setup then I can flip it over I'm gonna show you in a minute how that is done and then from the other side, the work zero, you can see here at the bottom, let me turn this thing around, 
Yeah. So if you see now, the axes are uh, oriented as they should be. So I do roughing pass. I contained a bit within the uh, outline of the spoon for this because I already cut all the way through. Then a finishing pass and if I zoom in a little bit you can see here at the edges it's not really that clean so I also did a profile and then you can see it cleans that up a little bit. And this is the final shape of the spoon. So now for the flip geometry. Uh, as I showed you before, the area between the lines will be milled away. So if I take my inner uh, stock and rotate that along the y-axis, so I'll rotate it 180 degrees, like so, and you can see that it locks itself in place with the uh, indentations all around. So. Yeah, you, you don't have to do anything more than that. No complicated setups, no dowels, no alignment pins. Just flip it around and it should lock itself into place. So I wrote a script to uh, automate the generation of the flip geometry. Put it in the script. I uh, made a button here on the transform panel to access it fast. So if I click it, it asks me uh, to pick a corner point in the top viewport. So that's where I am now. And I just pick a point where I can see if I uh, draw a rectangle, everything will be contained in that rectangle. So I just random pick a point like so. Then it asks me enter an end mill diameter. So the uh, end mill you will use to cut the uh, flip geometry, which was 8, but I can maybe now pick 3.175, which is uh, 1 8 inch. Okay, and then you can see it made the geometry. Now to check if everything is okay. I can um, perform an offset function on this shape with a distance of 3.175 millimeters and click here. Okay, so now I have the same pattern I had before. This will be what is uh, milled away and now I can once again rotate this shape and if everything is correct it should lock itself into place which it does so uh, that's how I do it and uh, I have a video showing you the whole process um, thanks for watching and happy carving